Hello and welcome to Linux Essentials, a brand new tutorial series that will contain short and sweet tutorials for all kinds of things that I think every Linux administrator or potential Linux administrator should know how to do that I can refer people back to later. I came up with this idea because there's some topics that I go over more than once in some of my videos, such as setting the host name, setting up SSH, things like that. And rather than repeat that content each and every single time I do a tutorial, I wanted to have a tutorial series that I can easily refer people back to for common topics. So for this series, there's no particular upload schedule, and I don't think there's going to be a ton of episodes in this series either. Basically, anytime I discover a topic that I think is going to come up again and again, a routine task if you will, I think it makes more sense for me to create one video to refer you guys back to rather than go over that same content again and again in every video. So one topic that comes up again and again is how to set the host name of your workstation or server. And that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. All right, so let's get right into it. So here on my laptop, I've pulled up a terminal. And depending on how you have your shell configured, most of the time, the host name of your server or workstation is going to be shown right in the bash prompt, as you see here. So mine is called studio-laptop. Clever, I know. Now, if for some reason the host name is not shown in the prompt, you can simply type host name with no arguments or options, just like that, and it's going to print the host name of your computer or server. If you are curious where that is actually stored, then let's take a look at the Etsy hostname file. And as you can see here, it's shown right there, there's the host name yet again. So let's take a look at how to actually change the host name. Now I'm running on Ubuntu, but it really doesn't matter because the commands that I'm going to show you should work on just about any distribution nowadays. There might be a few out there that don't have the command that I'm about to use available, but all of the major distros should support the command syntax that I'm about to show you. And the actual command that we're about to work with is the hostname ctl command. And if you enter that command by itself, it'll not only give you your host name, but it's also going to give you some additional information about your machine, as you can see here. Now, as you already know, my host name is Studio Laptop. So the first line gives us that information, but this same command is actually used to change the host name as well. In order to change the host name, you'll either need to be logged in as root, or you'll need to use sudo, and my user is j, so I'm going to need to use sudo because I'm not logged in as root. And the command that we're working with is, again, hostname ctl. And then the option to actually change the hostname is going to be set hyphen hostname. And then we type the actual hostname that we want our workstation or server to have. So for example, I'll rename mine to my hyphen laptop. So I'll press enter. And it kind of looks like nothing happened because we still see the old host name right here. And that's just because this terminal window was opened before I changed the host name. So if I open a new tab, for example, you can see that the new tab actually has the correct host name. So terminal windows that you currently have open will not show the new host name. Just keep that in mind. And if you want to, you can kind of force it along by doing exec and then bash assuming that bash is actually the shell that you're using, and you can see that my host name was updated. Now again, the command that I used was this one right here, sudo hostname ctl set hyphen hostname, and then the hostname that you want to set it to. And if we take a look at the Etsy hostname file again, we can see immediately that it has the new hostname there. Now if you actually use a domain, then you might want to actually include that in the name, so for example, mine is my-laptop, so it could actually be my-laptop.mydomain.com. And we can see here that the hostname was changed. So again, if you have a domain, consider using that when you set the hostname of your server or workstation. Now notice if I do exec bash again, the hostname in the bash prompt didn't actually update. And the reason for that is because the bash prompt is only going to show the host name up to the first period. So basically everything after my hyphen laptop is essentially truncated. But if we type the host name command, we can see that the entire host name is shown. 
So basically by condensing the host name in the bash prompt, it's just making sure that it's not too long. But that's not actually the only change that we should make. I mean, yes, we did just update the host name, and I could actually end the video right here, but there is one more thing that I recommend you do. If we take a look at the Etsy host file, we can see that the previous host name is still in this file. So even though the hostname CTL command allows you to set the host name, and it did let us do that, it doesn't actually update the Etsy host file. We have to do that ourselves. And that's pretty easy to do. So I'll go ahead and open it up. We just do sudo nano and then slash Etsy slash hosts. Now on your end, you're probably not going to have that second line. That's just something that I do. You'll probably just have this first line right here. And then you might have your host name either as localhost. You might have something after that. It varies from one distribution to another. But basically, the easiest way to facilitate editing the Etsy host file to reference your new host name is to definitely change the host name from the old to the new if it's already in the file. But if it's not, we could just simply do this. 127.0.1.1, which is a local host IP address still in the same range. And then right here, we could type the preferred name. And if you don't have a domain, then you're done. You could basically just type your host name, as I've done here, and that's it. But if you have a domain, what you should do is also type that here as well. And then space, and then the shortened version in addition. So this way, localhost actually resolves to the fully qualified domain name, which is the hostname.domain. That's the fully qualified domain name. But it also resolves to just the hostname as well. So regardless of which I type, it should be recognized. So if I save this, and in the case of nano, to save it, you hold control and press O. To bring up the save dialog, you press enter, and then control X to exit out. We should be able to ping the fully qualified domain name of this instance. So I'll just type the entire thing. And you can see that it's responding. Now what I should also be able to do is take away the domain name and still get a response, which I am. So basically to recap, we can use the hostname CTL command to set the hostname. If we enter hostname CTL by itself, it'll give us the current hostname and some additional information as well. But the set hyphen hostname argument that you see allows you to permanently set the domain of the computer or server to whatever you type at the end. And then we ran this command right here to edit the Etsy host file, which is optional but highly recommended. You might actually get some errors in the terminal if you don't actually set it here. It's just good practice. So we edited that file as well to reference the same host name that we set earlier, as you can see in the second line. And that's basically all there is to it. So there you go. As you saw, setting the host name on your Linux workstation or server is pretty easy and straightforward. And as a Linux administrator or a potential Linux administrator, I think it's something that you'll find yourself doing every now and then as your career progresses. So I hope this video helped you out. And as always, make sure you click that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And I'll have more videos in this series very soon. In fact, I also have another video in this series already uploaded. So be sure to check that one out as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.